Thank you. Thanks, Alejandro. Yeah, so what I was saying is, yeah, yesterday, no recap, just some small scalp trades. I didn't really take any, you know, crazy size or any crazy trades, just small green up about 200. Uh, this morning, <clears throat> sitting down, I saw PALI kind of popping up. I did miss the full front side, but I did catch a quick dip here um, on this panic dip. <clears throat> and so kind of just sitting on the bid, just buying the bid and waiting for it to get filled. Here's a small trade, 100 shares at 46 out at 54 and at 47 out at 58. So, um, so far, pretty nice small scalps there. And like, uh, it seems like this stock seems to have decent liquidity for the price range. It's not like crazy widespreads. It's about six cents, seven cents, but on a $9 stock. I'm trying to get this out of here here in one second. All right, there we go. But <clears throat> it's good that <clears throat> if there is a spread, I can always use the bid plus an offset. My offset is three cents. And three cents seems to be kind of like a nice sweet spot where it can capitalize on stocks like you know, like something like this. So where I'm not getting filled on the ass with the market order, I'd, I'd be willing to get filled you know, between the bid plus three cents on something like this, especially if on breakouts or dips, like the spread opens up a little bit with volatility. And then also, you know, rent with rent was like a 50 cent spread. And I was trading that with three cent offset on the bid and I was doing very well with that too. So three cents seems to be kind of like a sweet spot. <clears throat> big enough to, big enough to, to notice the impact on a, on a wider spread stock. Because before I was only using one cent spread, I mean, sorry, one cent offset. I don't know if I was saying spread the whole time, but yeah, one cent offset. And I wasn't, even with the one cent offset, I wasn't getting filled. So I had to increase that a little bit more. So yeah, P-A-L-I, we can take a look here. Successfully demonstrates bioactivation of Pali 2108, I guess it's the drug, an ex vivo study of normal, healthy, and ulcerid, ulcerative colitis patient stool. Interesting. <clears throat> so I guess it's pretty decent catalyst. I mean, we're up 100%. We've traded this stock before. Yeah, this day we've traded this crazy move. So it does have history of making big moves. I'm not sure how high this can go. Do have some levels out already. can take a look at the float. I'm not sure if this is going to be the one. Sometimes when the stocks make big moves like this, it's a sub 1 million share float though. So with the sub 1 million share float, you know, that does that definitely has potential if the volume is there and it seems like the volume is here. So this one's definitely going to be on watch. Definitely going to be on watch. I'm not going to be overly excited though because got to be prepared for anything. You know, this thing could easily just dump at the open and never come back. And I don't want to be that guy getting aggressive if, um, you know, if it's not going to continue. So <clears throat> got to wait for the signs. And the signs don't usually don't show themselves until like right as the move is about to happen. You know, buying coming in, level two, seeing some bids, bottom and tails, holding dips. You know, those are all signs that uh, there's there's interest. The bulls are interested. <clears throat> but sometimes, you know, you'll get this nice big move pre-market, and then at the open, it just goes straight down. And uh, I don't want to be that guy buying an endless dip. <coughs> DYNT. This one. Doesn't have any news on it. 
Not sure why it's up. Probably won't be the one today. It is the second one on the gap scan though, up 75%. WISA, looks like we have news. Wiza Inc.'s fourth HD TV license with multi-billion dollar revenue company signaling rapid adoption of its immersive audio technology. Yeah, so hopefully it does give us something, Chad. Um, what it does have going for it though is it, it is a sub 1 million share float. So with the sub 1 million share float, you know, this could, in perspective, you know, this could still be only er, still early in the move if it's like a sub 1 million share float. So it does, it definitely has potential. It has potential. Weeza. I don't think it has a big float. We can take a look at the dilution tracker. <clears throat> Weeza, 1.7 million shares. So slow float, pretty low. Good stuff, I like to see it. Does have news, extends five year licensing agreement with HDTV brand, which they don't, looks like they don't publish the brand they didn't say the brand just says hdtv brand but in the previous one it says multi-billion dollar revenue company they're like hyping it up but they don't say the actual name of the company so it sounds like a company that nobody knows because if it was a company that everyone knows like let's say sony or some big company um you know this thing would be this thing would be flying this thing would be like 10, 20 bucks already. You know, let's say like a small company has a, a, a license agreement with Sony. Like that's that's insane. That's insane news. That's an immediate buy. Like holy crap, it's going crazy. But yeah, this thing, you know, it doesn't say the company. It just says it's very vague. Five year licensing agreement. It doesn't say how much money. The agreement is like like estimated revenue. Estimated. You know, there's no dollar amounts. No company name. So it's probably not uh, kind of it doesn't it doesn't contribute at least to the to the FOMO. So we'll see. Weezo seems like volume's dying, so three ten would be the level for me. But I will put an alert at two, say over over this area, and say around two eighty. If we can break VWAP and hold, then I'd be looking for to break a three and three ten. Looks like Zendu has an update of the flow. Thanks. Why don't you trade in pre market? Some stocks make nice move then. Yeah, um, very good question. I used to trade pre market, um, which I I don't like. Occasionally I do, like just today I took like two trades. Um, on PALI on this dip. Yeah, I could make some more money pre-markets Doesn't seem like with months of months and years of statistics my um, profit factor Isn't that great? My edge isn't that great pre-market But I can still make money But it's not as good and I have to you know, I don't want to waste orders since I only have 392 orders I don't want to waste orders in a time of day where it's inconsistent and my edge isn't as drastic at the open from open to close my edge is significantly better so I like to save yeah right only 392 orders <laughs> it's quite fast how much I can how much I trade but how much I can go through those orders but yeah, um, pre-market definitely offers opportunity in the right market. Sometimes it's hit or miss. And also another thing is like, I think I'm a firm believer and we only have a certain limited time of intense focus and intense, you know, mental energy. And there's been a lot of times I'd wake up at 7 a.m. and I'd be trading, trading, trading. Maybe I'm small green. And then by the time the open happens, 
where my edge performs the best, I'm already mentally drained. Because that's two and a half hours from 7 a.m. to 9.30. It's two and a half hours of trading and my focus starts to not be as strong. And um, you know, there's more room for mistakes. Yeah, and also, you know, it can be a little bit riskier as well because the limited liquidity, if the volume isn't that great, the spreads, because you're you can't buy market, you have to buy either bid or ask or with an offset. And then, yeah, that's another thing. If you lose, it puts you in a bad mindset. I've noticed that too. You know, if you're coming in red, you may not be as aggressive, or if you're coming in green, you may not, or you may be too conservative because you want to protect what you have. Yeah, Ross, um, he likes to trade pre-market. Um, but he he hasn't been doing that great either though. It's he he's been just kind of just chugging along like maybe a thousand dollars to two thousand a day. So it's not like he's making crazy gains that he was once you know in twenty twenty to twenty twenty two. And yeah, he's been doing it for a long time. He does he doesn't use Thinkorswim. So Thinkorswim gives you the price improvement on market orders. So so it gives you a little bit more of an edge than if you were to buy and sell direct routing, because direct routing you can just do, if you do a market order, it's likely going to send fill you on the ask because they don't have price improvement. Price, price improvement is just Thinkorswim is just guaranteed to give you the best price that they have available, and usually it's a lot less than the ask by sending a market order. Not always, but most of the time. Um, so you get that price improvement coming in and coming out, so it increases your edge on Thinkorswim a little bit. But yeah, it, it really comes down to what you're comfortable with. You know, look at your statistics. Everyone trades different. If you're someone who does a lot better with pre-market, then trade pre-market mostly and do your biggest size pre-market. <coughs> or if you're like me, do your biggest size between 9.30 and 10.30. <coughs> Another thing is that <coughs> I trade so fast, <coughs> like my average hold time is like less than five seconds. Pre-market... <coughs> It's just not as volatile to trade that fast and you just get chopped up too much pre-market. It seems like pre-market, maybe you need to adopt a little bit of a longer hold time to capture the move, which I'm just not conditioned for. I'm a little bit more conditioned for a really rapid trading style, rapid in and out, capturing volatile moves. And that is mostly happening at the bell between 9.30 and 10.30. Correct, yeah, our strategy works so well with more volume, so pre-market doesn't really make sense, yeah. It can, like I am profitable, net profitable pre-market, but the edge is like, let's say profit factor, it's like 20%, 15%, 20%. We're at the open, sometimes it's like 30 40 50%. So I want to save my trades, my orders, all my mental energy for the time of day where I'm most likely to succeed. There's another stock, PRSO. Let's take a look at this one. Panasonic. So it looks like this is Pan. No, not Panasonic. Panasonic. That's a no. That's a well-known company. Panasonic introduced new MM Wave Wi-Fi solution utilizing this company's chipset technology. It's like a decent catalyst. That's a decent catalyst. I think I'm going to keep this one on watch. It could be a sleeper. The volume, it, it doesn't seem like it has the most attention right now. But if it can, sometimes it's always, sometimes it's not the, the leading gapper that is the one. Sometimes it's like the, the second or third one on the gap scan that gets the attention. It has a 2 million share flow. <clears throat> so, I mean, this one checks a lot of the boxes here. I mean the the daily chart the daily chart let's take a look at the daily chart the the pre market chart doesn't look terrible it's up forty four percent it's at what topped out at two twelve 
So we're right at the upper end of this these uh, levels here. So let's draw out some resistance. Yeah, so we're gonna have to break 10, 10, 10 and hold these areas. Look at this, it could not hold up here. It does have room. I feel like it does have room if we can break 210. We have room maybe up to three. Three, three or four, somewhere in there. I mean, this doesn't look terrible. I would keep it on watch. The main thing I'm gonna be looking for is like, I need a fat candle with huge volume towards the high. Then I'll jump in. Fat, can I need a fat candle with high a day volume to the high. That's what that's gonna be my signal to look at this. But we're gonna set we're gonna put on some alerts here. Yeah, a fat candle. Yeah, if we can break over this pivot, so these pivots here, these previous highs, 92, 93, if we can like start to get up towards two, then I'll be interested. I'll put at 199 so maybe I can catch the break of two. <clears throat> But this one could be a sleeper. <clears throat> this could be the one that's you know catches everyone's attention you know later in the morning once you know the dust starts to settle at the open. But so my main watch here is me PALI. Don't really like Weezy that much. I just don't like the catalyst and PRSO, PALI and PRSO. So. Hopefully we can get some solid green today. Overall market, let's take a look. So it looks like we kind of broke down this channel that we were looking at yesterday, coming down. Seems like the uh, market is starting to realize that maybe the rate cuts aren't coming, probably. That's probably why we're getting this. but. Anyways, let's hopefully we can capture some momentum today. Market seems to be pretty decent. I wouldn't say it's super cold. I mean, we have PALI made a nice move. So be ready for anything. Also be ready for nothing too. That's just, that's just the name of the game. That's just trading for you. You got to be ready for a hot day or a cold day on a flip of a, a flip of a switch. It can switch that fast. So stay calm, cool and collected, follow your rules. Um, Make sure you're not averaging into losers. And if you follow all your rules and your statistics, and your statistics show you're profitable, you can definitely make, probably make some money. So, but nothing is guaranteed. So that's why we manage the risk, follow our max loss rules, don't over trade, and um, stay disciplined. So thanks for tuning in for the live stream hit that thumbs up button for me on the way out and if you're new consider subscribing love to have part of the community remember day trading is risky so uh, my results are not typical and uh, following these videos or my channel will not guarantee you have similar results or be a profitable trader so also be wary of scammers and impersonators don't ever ask for money or personal information there have been reports of fake accounts trying to scam so be aware of that as well so good luck today and I'll see you guys on the recap. Peace.